Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you a few different things that you can do with Bubble's debugger tool. So the debugger is this toolbar that shows up at the bottom of your screen and it's actually fixed there when you have the debugger on, which is uh, indicated by the parameter up here in your URL. So debug underscore mode equals true. This will actually get added to your URL if you hit the preview button directly from your editor. So Bubble will just add that on for you. So if you ever want to remove the debugger and preview your app without it, all you have to do is just remove that part of your URL. So the debugger tool is a really great troubleshooting tool. Um, it actually lets you inspect all the different properties of your elements on your page and break down your workflow step by step. And I have a couple examples here. So the first one, uh, we're gonna look at this very simple sign up form. So I've got my first and last name, text inputs, an email and a password. And if we take a quick look at the sign up buttons workflow here, all I'm doing is triggering this sign uh, the user up action and all of those fields are uh, mapped to the appropriate uh, input values there. Okay, so if I, uh, fill, let, let me fill out the form first. John Smith, John at smith.com, test, all right. So if I click on step-by-step -step here at the bottom, and then click on the button that triggers a workflow. So you wanna make sure that this is on before the workflow begins. What will happen is Bubble will pause at every single action in the workflow so that you can really inspect everything about every single action. So if the first thing is that our button sign up was clicked and I can see the element that was used. I can actually hover here and it'll highlight on my screen there. Okay, and then once I click on run next, it'll move on to the action, which is to sign the user up. So now here I have a lot more information to uh, look at and explore. So uh, it will give me all of the properties of that action. Now for all of the stuff where I've inserted input values, I can actually see the actual value that has been typed in. So I typed in the word John, it's gonna show me the word John. So this is gonna be really helpful to use if you are running into any issues that um, isn't super clear um, because running the workflow step by step will actually show you the values that are being used. So that might help you um, figure out, you know, if something's not behaving the right way, which is super helpful if you don't even have an issue in your issue checker. Sometimes your app can be completely clean without issues, but it might not be behaving the way that you want it to. So this is where the debugger really helps out. So uh, important thing to know here is anything that you see in blue is going to be a dynamic value and you can click on that value and then evaluate it. So once you click on something here that's in blue, um, you, it will pop up in the evaluator section on the right here. Now this evaluator basically tells you, it kind of takes you through a breadcrumb trail of where that value came from. This value is pretty straightforward. It's simply coming from the input on the page. So uh, again, this is in blue, so I can still continue to click on it. So input email, this is one piece of it, and I can hover over um, uh, this text here so I can reveal the element. And then I can click on value separately so that it can show me what the value actually is, all right? So if you've got a super complicated search, um, you know, for a repeating group source or an initial content or something, this evaluator is gonna be super helpful because you can really go step by step, one thing at a time and see where, uh, you know, any potential bottlenecks are or if there's a hole somewhere. Um, it'll, it'll help you find out where to, where to make the fix. So now I'll click on run next and it's done with the workflow so that'll go away. All right, so the next thing that you can do with the debugger is just in general inspecting the properties of your elements, okay? So if I click on inspect on the right here, I can now hover over any element on my page and I can actually hover over this input, for example, this is our email address input. First of all, I have all of these different properties that's showing me all the values um, for the input. Now, of course, you can always go to the property editor for your input. You can see every, everything that you've set up there. But where this becomes super useful is when you have conditions and, it, and your conditions are changing your values. Um, this will let you see in this exact moment in time what, you know, what setting is being applied to the element itself. 
So this is an email um, input, and I think here, yep, we've got content format. It's telling me that this is set, this input is set to accept an email value, not a text, not a number. Um, and at the bottom, I can see whether the value in there is valid or not, whether it is an email address or it's not. So that tells me yes or no, which is helpful to see there. And I can also see whether an element is meeting a condition or not. Okay, so you know it's meeting a condition when the condition is uh, in green here. And you know that it's not when it's in red. So this input has two conditions applied to it. And I can go to the inputs conditional tab. Um, I've got a style here, actually. Let me remove the style. All right, so I've got two conditions. The input is focused, it'll turn blue. And when the input is valid, uh, or is not valid, the, bo the box shadow color will turn red. So uh, currently the input is focused and you can see that um, it's got a blue box shadow and I can see that yes, it is meeting that condition and it's applying all the properties set for that condition. All right, and this is something this inspection tool can be used on any element. So I can um, select my button here and again when the inspector is up and I click on buttons that trigger workflows I'm not actually going to be triggering those workflows I'm just going to be selecting them to change uh, my information here in the inspector all right so I do have a text here that has um, a condition applied to it I'm going to select it here in my uh, editor and I can see that the condition for this text is when the user is not logged in we're gonna change the text. So by default, it's gonna say I am logged in. And if the user isn't logged in, it's gonna say I am logged out. And we're gonna change the color to red. So when it's meeting the condition, it should look like that. Okay, that's my little preview there. So I'll turn that off. So that's what it's gonna look by default, all right? So if I go into the inspector tool and select this uh, text here I can see that it's not meeting that condition because I am currently logged in but now let's click on this button because this button's gonna log me out and it'll kick in the condition for that text so I'll click on that oh I've still got my it's in run slow mode now all right okay so I am logged out and this text is meeting its condition I'm going to click on it again you can see the conditions in green and, and here are my uh, properties that I'm changing and notice how the button disappeared. So I have another condition on that button. Um, obviously this is, you can see that what's, what this is super helpful for is, may, is you know, evaluating your conditions and stuff because oftentimes those really affect the way elements um, appear on the page and things can get confusing if you have a lot going on and if something just isn't looking right. A lot of times it has to do with the conditions you've got set up. So um, I do have a condition here on this logout button. Uh, when the current user isn't logged in, then we're just gonna hide it because they don't need to click on this button again. They are already logged out, all right? So that button's no longer there. But what if I wanted to evaluate the properties of that button still while, while it's hidden? You can do that. So this drop down here gives you a list of all of your elements on your page, whether they're visible or not visible at this point in time. Okay, so I can see here is my logout button and I can see that it is currently invisible. That's something that Bubble adds for you. I can also search, type to uh, search and filter to get to it quickly. So I can click on this button and then I can see, oh, okay, right, that's why it's not visible. It's because it's meeting this condition. Um, the user isn't logged in and so therefore uh, that visibility condition is kicked in. All right, now my next example is this repeating group here. So I'm gonna go over to the editor and uh, look at this repeating group. It's a very simple setup. It's currently set up to show me all users in my database. It's a search of users with no constraints, okay? And the text, and, and also don't have any, any conditions in here as well. It's nothing funny going on there. And the text element inside the cell is gonna show me the current cell's user's unique ID. So every user has one, so I must see a unique ID um, for all my users in my database that should show up there. Now, if I go to my data tab, I can see that I have seven users, okay? All right, now, if I go to my page here, I see that I do not have any results showing up in my repeating group. Okay, this might be something that you run into where you've set something up, but things just aren't appearing the way that you expect it. The first place I would go to figure this out is the inspector tool. So I'll click on inspect and select my repeating group. Okay, then I will go to the data source. You know, I'm not seeing users, so there might be something going on with my data. Um, obviously, I have users. I can see them here in my database. So why aren't they showing up for me? 
So I'm going to click on search for users here and then drill down in this evaluator to see what's going on. All right. So if I click on this, I can see that there are no users turning up in the search. Why is that? I absolutely have users. I can see them here. Why am I not seeing anything come up in the repeating group? I would also go look at the repeating group itself. Does it have any conditions? No, there's nothing that's preventing the data source from being changed to a blank uh, list. So when you have something like this where your data is not being searched or filtered, is not being found when it should be, especially with a simple search like this, always remember to check your privacy roles, okay? So um, uh, by default, these privacy roles are turned off, like they, they allow for all access, everything's open. So um, if you've never messed with your privacy roles, you probably wouldn't be running into something like this. But if I, I do have a privacy role set up here for the user type. So I can see that I have a role set up so that when the current user that is a logged in user is uh, the user in question. So if I'm performing a search of users, um, this is referring to my user record that comes up in the search. When the logged in user is uh, the user record in question, then I can view its fields. I can find it in a search. Um, I can view any attached files. I have all of this checked. And I can see that I have an opposing role, which is this, this default permission for everyone else. All right, and it's all turned off for that. So if you are not looking at your own user record, you cannot see that information. You cannot see other users' records. So why am I seeing blank here? Well, first of all, I'm logged out, okay? So if I were to log in, I'm gonna run as Jon Snow here. All right, so I'm currently logged in as one user and I only get one user in return because the privacy role only allows me to see my own user record. If I go to the evaluator here, now I have one result coming up, okay? Now, if I were to loosen up this privacy permission here, let's say I get rid of this role and now the type is visible by everyone, okay? Now I'm gonna refresh the page and I should be able to see all the users, there we go, in my repeating group. All right, so I didn't change anything with the repeating group or with the data source, but because I inspected the data source and I could see what bubble was returning, it had nothing to do with the condition or formatting or the size of my text element or anything like that. It was actually at the level of the search. Um, there was a privacy permission restricting um, results from coming back because I wasn't giving you know any users access. Okay, so these are just a few um, common uh, use cases for the debugger. Obviously, the more complicated your searches are and your dynamic values are, really the much more useful this is. I've actually been able to figure out really complicated issues solely with the debugger because it really helps you inspect everything. Sometimes you can see stuff a lot easier here that is not so obvious um, when you're you know, staring at your workflows if you've got a whole bunch of them or uh, looking at all the properties. All right, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching.